Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to check out the reviews of the M3 Ultra. Been excited about this system ever since it got announced. I actually ordered one, so I got one on order. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the order. I'm in a few different minds about it after seeing some of the reviews, but I'll share along my thoughts as we go through it. I literally went around, I watched every single one, and even the foreign language ones, I dubbed it. I, I ran it from my dubbing script and I translated it all into English so I can understand it. But it is a $100,000 computer. It's not normal to play games because it is a very used rendering engine. Compared to the 70 billion parameter, I think- And the three body is 25 to 35. The refresh rate of the new machine is almost two times faster than the old machine. It's still a big miracle. So the first thing out of the back, let's just look at the performance now in Geekbench. You see the M4 Max is very similar in performance with the M3 Ultra. So that's the only reason why I'm a bit cautious about the system. I mean, I love, I love the Apple Port 5, 12 gigabytes as an optional RAM. If anyone's getting into this LLM world, whew, memory is your best friend to get some of these crazy big models running locally. You don't want that stuff going to the cloud if you're doing anything private. So uh, I think it's amazing what they did. I thought that maybe they might push it up to 256, but they went to 512. So I'm very, very happy with that. But performance, the M3 Ultra, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a, a generation behind. I mean, if you want to get the amount of memory, traditionally in a graphics card, you get multi GPUs and the performance would scale upwards because the more GPUs you add, the faster performance you get and the more memory you get. But with this guy, the performance is uh, very, very limited. And I'm going to just jump in actually to show you the performance. So we've got Geekbench over here showing that the M4 Max and M3 Ultra on the CPU side are very, very, very similar. Now, when it comes to Let's just jump in the video. This is unwire.hk, the Chinese. Check out the video. And we will try again to ask them a very classic 30 question. So over here, you can see that they're using DeepSeek R170 V1 based on Facebook's Llama. And they're getting on the M3 Ultra 11.3. So what's good about that is I've got the exact same system over here, except this is running on my M4 Max. So I'm just going to run it here. And what I'll do is I'm going to run their uh, question. First, actually, I'll get the, the speed, so I'll say hello. And we see that the tokens per second on this system over here, we're getting 10.69 tokens a second, and they're getting on their system 11.3. So 10.69 versus 11.3 isn't that much of a difference. I'm gonna jump in and throw in their fun question, I'll put it in English, and let's just see how fast it is to respond. It does look good, it does respond very, very, fast i mean 10 tokens a second is usable it's a bit sluggish anything under 12 20 is a bit sluggish it's still very usable in the fact that it's running locally on your system no uploading to the cloud i find that amazing but the key challenge over here is is can we get the complete r1671 up there and it doesn't look like these guys actually did it instead they ran the full fat version of these challenges Another guy that tried running it as well, he said he couldn't actually get the DeepSeek R1 running, the full 671 running on his system. We also tried the complete 670 owned Roan. As a result, it did not run. In the actual test, the 512 display of Mac 46 can still be used. At first glance, it will be wrong. So we also took a big step. Maybe the next generation of M4 Ultra will be able to complete the short test. This guy over here, he's did some really cool tests. He ran an 8-bit quantized version. Now the difference between 8-bit and 4-bit isn't actually that much. I mean, memory-wise, you get a lot more bang for a buck with 4-bit. But, you know, when it comes to the accuracy, it's very, 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 very similar. But he was just going all out, maxing it out, as you should with the Ultra Edition. And he did run the 671. He ran it on 3-bit and 4-bit. And he was getting he was getting 9 to 21 tokens a second. So I found that to be very, very interesting. I can't get a 671 billion parameter model running on my system because I've only got 128 gigabytes of RAM. Dave2D, he said... The big one, that 671 billion parameter model, needs the highest configuration. CM, he managed to get it running all in memory at four bit quantization between 16 to 18 tokens a second. And uh, that is that's really good, it's running enough. Now the thing that I thought was strange that it was actually a better performing model at that 671 billion parameter size compared to the 70 billion parameter. And I think it's because of the architecture, that was the only thing that I could kind of figure out in my brain. 
Now, regarding his question, why the 70 billion parameter version runs slower than the 671 billion parameter version, it's only because DeepSeek, the way they do their 671 is they shard it up into something called a mixture of experts. So inside the 671 is actually different models inside there. And depending on what you ask it, it will shift it down. So it's actually technically running a 30, around 30 billion parameter model when you got that 600 billion parameter model and that just gets shifted up. So that's why the 600 billion parameter model runs faster than the 70 billion parameter model. So that's very, very interesting to see. Other reviews, you can see someone was very, very happy with it because he saw that like on Cinebench, it ran about 50% faster than the M4 Max. It's just one banana. It's about 10,000 points higher than the 12 Ultra. It's about 2200 than 4 Max. The 4 Max is about 37,000 points higher than the 4 Max. And another guy did a test and he found it very, very similar performance towards a 3090, further away from a 4090, but more so than a closer to a 3090. So I guess, I mean, it's not, not the best performance, but the fact that they're putting all of this effort into making it be able to run these super large models and do all these fancy stuff that you couldn't do before without having a multi-system setup that I think is amazing. I'm really, really excited to see what's going to happen. Now I did, like I said, I did pre-order it and um, I'm having a bit of doubts because I really wanted a bit more performance. I knew what I was getting into, but the only thing that I'm waiting on is I heard some rumors. I thought, I don't know if they can happen. Probably, probably won't happen, but someone on the internet said that maybe on WWDC, they're gonna announce the Mac Pro with an M4 Ultra. So I figured if I can just hold out a few more months to find out what the situation is, I'll be at a better position to figure out where to spend my money. Because if they release the M3 Ultra and then the M4 Ultra in a couple of months, I'll be devastated. So I probably don't wanna do that. I think it's probably really good that they did release the M3 Ultra for anyone that did buy the MacBook Pro M4 Max because you know the jump isn't gonna be as dramatic. If they had a, an M4 Ultra just released right now, I'll be like saying, oh no, maybe I shouldn't have got that MacBook Pro. So such a high configuration, I might be having doubts about it, but because they made such a confusing release for this M3 Ultra, I'm just thinking about it and finding out. So maybe I might actually just hold out for, to see if they're going to do anything at WWDC. They probably won't because it took them a long time to release the M3 Ultra. So maybe everything's going to be staggered a year behind, but there's rumors. So that's the only thing that's has me reconsidering my order, but I would love to test it out. So I'm not sure if I'm going to cancel it or not, I'll test it out or figure it out because I want to see how those video AI video models run and all these kind of cool tests I can run to see what's happening. But out of the box, it's like a 3090 with a large amount of memory at super awesome power consumption. When we measured the consumption, always on the same benchmark, consumed almost 490 watts. So let's say it is true, this is probably half. So that's just something to know. But let me know, have you guys ordered it? Are you guys getting it? How are you finding the performance of it? What kind of awesome stuff are you guys doing? I think if we can get some local LLMs running in the future, that's gonna be amazing. All right, guys, hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.